Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. So welcome back, everybody. I hope you are all staying safe and healthy. My name is Andy with Boatworks today, and this week, uh, well, to say that it did not go as planned would be pretty accurate. <laughs> but regardless, let's see what we can put together for this video. So that said, let's just get started. So now, if you recall from last week, there was one thing that I had to order and that I actually needed in order to start cutting into this transom, which was some new saw blades. Now, originally, Tracking had them scheduled for delivery here at the beginning of this week, and for one reason or another, maybe it's this whole virus thing, I don't know, but for one reason or another, uh, now Tracking has that delayed and it's not going to be uh, scheduled for delivery until Friday, which doesn't do me any good because this video has to be finished and uploaded by Friday night. Uh, that, along with some other uninteresting things that I had going on with my truck. Uh, can I just say, you know how impossible it is to try and get some work done on your truck with the whole country, with the whole world shut down? Not very easy at all. But regardless, I still want to try and salvage this week and continue on with our pre-season or our pre-launch tips and tricks to try and help you get your boat ready for this coming season. So last week you saw me demonstrating the structural repair putty by Total Boat, and this stuff is fantastic for like like I showed last week, filling in old screw holes, bolt holes. Um, if you have any little chips and dings uh, in your boat, scratches that kind of thing, as well as creating fillets. Now because this has glass fibers mixed in with it, uh, when it cures, it is rock hard, and because it's a, such a hard compound when it's cured. It's not the easiest material to sand. I mean, it sands nice, but you're not going to be able to sand this off to a nice, clean, feathered edge. Because of that, they came up with this, which is a polyester-based fairing compound. And this is what we're going to be working with today. So where and when would be the best place to use this polyester fairing compound? Uh, well, kind of the natural fit that I see is if I, if I were doing a repair above the waterline, and I'll, I'll touch on that here in a second. But doing a repair above the waterline, and specifically if I was going to be looking to finish that repair using gel coat. Now, gel coat, as you know, is a polyester based material, and it's best applied over top of another polyester or vinyl ester based material. Now, if I were doing a repair below the waterline, or I was going to be finishing an area off, uh, eventually going to be finishing it with paint, now there, uh, to be honest, I would actually use a, uh, an epoxy based fairing compound, something like Total Fair or the 202. <laughs> fairing compound by Alexio. I believe they also make another one. Uh, but as you can see, this is a huge container, which is why I haven't opened it yet. But uh, the reason for using a, uh, an epoxy based compound in those kind of situations is epoxy, it's more waterproof. It, 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 does, it allows less moisture to transfer through the, uh, through the film, as well as it's just a more stable substrate when it's cured as well as in post cure. So when you're talking about paint, which is just such a paper, paper thin film, uh, that kind of detail is important when you're talking about uh, gel coat, on the other hand, which is much, much thicker, not so much. Now, as far as how to actually mix and use this stuff, uh, it's actually quite simple. Just basically think of it like a normal polyester-based resin, which you know, that's kind of what this is. So you're going to want to catalyze this at roughly 1 to 2 percent. Now, because this is more of a paste and not a, a, you know, a liquid that you can pour into a measuring cup, uh, what I'm going to do, as far as getting this mixed, is I'm just going to eyeball the, uh, the amounts. And I'm going to try and put them in what looks to be eh, kind of close to like one ounce uh, piles. And then to each of these piles then, I'm going to be mixing in, depending on the temperatures that I'm working in, um, if it's cooler temps, again, I'm uh, probably going to end up doing about 10 to 12 drops of MEK, or methyl alpha ketone hardener. Uh, with peroxide, <laughs> and if it's a little bit, uh, I'm sorry, if it's warmer out, I'm going to do 10 to 12 drops, just so it gives me a little bit of extra working time. And if it's a little bit cooler, like it is in the shop here, uh, then I'll probably do closer to the 12 to 14 drops. So here I got four piles, they're roughly uh, similar size, and again, this isn't uh, rocket science here, it just needs to be close.
so for now, I'm just going to leave this be and let it do its thing for eh, about an hour or so. And I guess we'll check back after it's done cooking. So it's actually the next day. I waited around last night for about an hour. To, you know, to this stuff got to the point where it was able to be sanded, in which it was, but it was also almost 7 o'clock at night, so I kind of packed it up. A um, couple of things I want to uh, kind of go over real quick before I actually start knocking this down is uh, this, this uh, fairing compound, it doesn't, you, need, you don't need to go over top of this with anything else, like a PVA or any kind of a, a, a resin with wax. This already has a wax or something along those lines already mixed into it. So when you lay this down, uh, basically you let the catalyst do its thing and it's cured, it's you know, ready to sand and, and good to go. Now, last week, uh, when I was talking about the, the structural repair putty, if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a, a well, actually, I'll, I'm not going to put a link up here. I'll put a link for that video down in the description. Um, but one of the options that I, when I was going over the structural repair putty, is that I said that uh, that material does not have any kind of a wax in it, so you had to go over top of it with either uh, a, a polyester resin with a wax additive or some PVA or, and I said, you know, I'll allude to this next week, or this stuff. Uh, so, in theory, if you were doing gel coat repair, you could, if you had a deep gouge, you could fill it in with a structural repair putty and then let that kind of skin over, you know, wait, wait for about an hour for it to kind of set up. Then you can go over top of it with this fairing compound and then walk away for the night and come back the following day and everything should be cured and ready to sand and uh, basically one, one time going over that repair with the sander and in theory, you should be ready to pretty much go right over top of that with your finishing gel coat and then actual, actually finish the repair. Now, one more thing I want to touch on is earlier in this video that I said that this uh, fairing compound would be perfect for doing above the waterline repairs. Uh, when you go to Total Boat's website, it actually says that it's not intended for use below the waterline. However, there is a little bit of a cheat that you can use. Uh, you can use this below the waterline, providing you take an extra step and you go over top of that with some sort of a, an epoxy based compound. And you know what they recommend is their Total Protect, um, right? here, which is essentially their, a barrier coat, epoxy-based barrier coat. Um, I would also imagine, I don't know if, I don't know for certain, but I, I don't see any reason why this wouldn't work, but I would also imagine that if you were to go over top of that with, say, you know, a, a, one of their regular epoxies, that should work as well. Just basically, the name of the game is, as long as you're able to seal the, uh, the, the polyester fairing with some sort of epoxy-based compound. Now, typically, I think, like I've mentioned, uh, I think a barrier coat would be probably the best option because that's the material you're going to lay up probably four, five, six layers uh, or coats and then you're not going to really sand much of that off. You're then going to be going over top of that with some type of a bottom paint. So I just want to clarify that, but to be honest, I mean, between you and me, uh, if I were doing uh, repair below the waterline and I had the option of either using an epoxy base or a, uh, a this uh, polyester based fairing, Below the waterline, if I had that option, I would still go with the epoxy based right off the bat. Now, for above the waterline, for doing gel coat, you know, uh, topside repairs, this polyester stuff, it's, it's honestly pretty hard to beat. But enough yammering, let me get this stuff knocked down. This stuff filled and sanded beautifully. Nice. Kind of a funky design over here. Well, just, I don't know if I already showed this before, but just to give you an idea of what it looked like before I started, this is a pretty textured surface on this panel. A lot of really deep grooves in through here. But where we filled it in, it's just beautiful. It's perfect. So now with the surface prepped the way that it is, uh, we'd be ready to, if this were an actual repair, we'd be ready to move on to actually mixing up our gel coat and finishing this. So good stuff. Very good stuff. Set up quick and it sands, it sanded very easily. Like butter. Now before we wrap this video up, there's just one last thing to do and that is to actually see what UPS brought. Fresh off the truck. If 
my two new blades. So we are officially ready to start cutting into the transom, but unfortunately, that's going to have to wait until next weekend. So as always, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you found this helpful you know, for, uh, for your own projects this spring. If you, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. Love to have you on board. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, you can leave those down below. And as always, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Stay healthy, and I'll see you next week. This has been the Boatworks Today Protection.